What are some psychology experiments with interesting results? Mice were put on two sides of a wall with a door in. Only the right mouse could open the door. Slowly, they filled the left mouse's room with water and eventually when right mouse saw them in danger, they opened the door. However, mice that had previously been on he left side and were now on the right, mice who had previously been wetted, opened the door considerably faster because they knew how unpleasant it was to be in the other scenario. Basically mice have empathy link here, http www.bbc.com earth story 20150514 rats save mates from drowning. Hedonic adaptation. Put simply, a person who had just won the lottery and another person who had just been paralyzed took a survey to measure their life contentment. Obviously it was high and low, respectively. However, they both took the same survey a year later and both scored similarly. The point being that regardless what happens to you in life, good or bad, you will always adapt and spend most of your life feeling neutral. One time I participated in a paid research experiment. I was basically tricked into thinking I was drunk. I was placed in a room with two other people and we were instructed to drink vodka with cranberry juice over a period of time while we socialized. After we drank I was placed in a room where I had to read some flashing words on a computer. I felt pretty drunk at this point. When the researcher came back into the room he gave me my car keys and said I was never actually given alcohol. He briefly told me that because I was anticipating drinking for this experiment that my brain had tricked me into feeling the effects of being intoxicated. I immediately snapped out of it and was completely amazed at how I felt. Solomon Ash's experiment on conformity. He set up a test wherein he would show three lines of different lengths to five or six individuals, I forgot the exact number, who had to state which line was the longest of the three. The thing is, only the last individual is the participant and the others are actors paid to answer in a specific manner. For the first few questions, they choose the correct answer, but later on they start choosing the wrong one. The participants are conflicted as to whether they will say the correct answer or conform to the wrong answer as to not be judged by others or due to self-doubt of their own answers. In the end, most do conform. It's really interesting since it shows how powerful conformity is in the face of doubt, up to a point that some even question their own sanity during the test. Another variation of the experiment also had interesting results. It had the same setup with five individuals with the last person being the participant. However, this time some of the actors say the wrong answer while one actor says the correct one. There was an increase in participants who would choose the correct answer and avoid conformity. It shows how much doubt one can have on oneself when alone, but be brought back to self-confidence when they find outside support. Edit. Conformity in participants might be caused by either being afraid others judgment or due to self-doubt. Split brain studies. One example, by providing differing information to each hemisphere of the brain in split brain individuals, those with a severed corpus callosum, meaning teres no communication between the two hemispheres, they found that people would actually physically grab their own hand with their other hand if they saw it making a mistake. Basically each side of the brain controls one side of your body, and in split brain people you can actually make both sides display a disagreement with the other. Which is insane, if you think about it. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine, and then put it in a box with only that lever, it will press that lever as much as y'all allow it. The rat will stop eating and drinking and just do cocaine. If you train a rat to press a lever for cocaine and then put it in an enriched environment, e.g. other rats to play with, toys, place to explore, where it could still press the lever for cocaine, it may press the lever occasionally but not as frequently as its counterpart in the dull environment. These findings were a big deal in the behaviorism world because they put a lot of previous results into context and help explain the link between poverty and drug use. Edit. Wow. I didn't expect this to blow up like this. I'm on mobile and don't have access to a computer right now so linking sources will be difficult, but a Google search of Rat Park will pull up plenty of sources. 
I was wrong about the rats being conditioned using cocaine, it was morphine but the idea is still the same. Many people have pointed out errors with these experiments, and there are plenty, but that's the beauty of science, it allows for the development of testable hypotheses which can change given the current state of evidence. Also, thank you for the silver kind stranger. Edit 2. This experiment does not prove that bad environments facilitate drug use or that good environments protect against it. Addiction is immensely complex and this is just a small piece of it. Research on learned helplessness is fascinating. Researchers would put dogs into shuttle boxes, long cage-like structures that the dog could move around in, and would shock the dog through the floor on one side of the box. The dog, at first, could easily escape the shock by moving to the other side of the box. Eventually, the researcher adds a wall so the dog can't escape the shocks, it just sits there, being shocked without escape. Through this the dog learns helplessness over repeated trials and extended periods of time. Even when the wall is taken down, the dog won't walk to the other side and avoid the shocks anymore. It has become so used to the pain that it doesn't even try to escape when escape would be easy. This research has been used to explain certain aspects of human behavior, especially related to repeated experiences of abuse, addiction, and poverty. It takes a long time to get somebody out of this mindset, and is possibly one of the reasons why people get stuck in terrible situations. I don't know the name of it but apparently two people become closer if they survive through something together. Not even actual surviving death scenarios but anything that has you on your toes and heart racing, like a roller coaster. The Car Crash Experiment It demonstrated that the way investigators word a question has an immediate effect on the subject's memory of an event. It was part of a suite of studies by Elizabeth Loftus, with various other co-researchers, that began to call into question the veracity of eyewitness accounts. HTTPS www.simplipsychology.org Loftus Palmer. HTML HTTPS www.simplipsychology.org Loftus Palmer. HTML hashtag X200B The influence of the color red in sports HTTP community. Advantage and X. Nightmore Press Research Judges were shown a video of a taekwondo match and awarded more points to the red competitor, versus the blue competitor. When the colors were digitally reversed, judges awarded more points to the other, now red, competitor. Edit, since there's a lot more interest than I expected, here's some more info, red may be a signal of dominance as reddened skin is associated with higher testosterone, or possibly higher fertility in women. Wearing red may induce intrinsic psychological effects which increase dominance in addition to altering the perception of others. Researchers found that putting red leg bands on birds increased dominant behavior, as they took the lion's share of the food. For my psychology degree dissertation, I presented photos of men to be rated on a scale of friendly, 0, to threatening, 10. Men received a higher threat score if I photoshopped their t-shirt to be red smile. Edit 2, thank you for the gold award smile. Aron and Dutton, 1974, Misattribution of Arousal. Men who had just walked across bridge, either steady or unsteady, were approached by a female psychology student, posing to do a project on the effects of exposure to scenic attractions on creative expression. The men had to complete a questionnaire and write a short dramatic story about a picture she provided and she gave them her phone number if they had more questions. Men who walked across the shaky bridge were more likely to call her up because they misattributed the arousal from the bridge to the woman. TLDR, watch a horror movie on the first date. Edit, grammar. Sorry about the confusion. If you stare into a dimly lit, i.e. candle lit. Mirror for 10 plus minutes you start to see hallucinations. What individuals see tends to vary, but they've used this as a test to simulate schizophrenia before because some see monsters deformities general weird shit. I did a variation of it for a mate at uni and completely wimped out of it. After my face started not looking like my face anymore, I had a complete dissociation, 
I stopped looking and just waited out the time. Edit. I can't find the exact study as I don't have journal access anymore but here's https www.psychologytoday.com us blog making sense chaos 201408 monsters in the mirror no really literal monsters a decent summary of it in layman's terms edit 2 this is a weird visual trick that your brain can play on you but the effects can seem super real so maybe don't do this if you are susceptible to hallucinations or a wimp with this kind of shit like me edit 3, thanks for the gold. And yes it is basically a scientific bloody Mary. There have been some experiments conducted, but the negativity effect negativity bias is really sad to me https wikipedia.org wiki negativity bias https wikipedia.org wiki negativity bias it basically says that negative things have a greater emotional and psychological toll on our health than positive and neutral things. So you got an A on a test, that's great. But you totally fail a test, and the world crumbles and it's a total disaster. A hundred things can go right and work perfectly throughout the day but it goes totally undetected in our minds. Then someone cuts us off in traffic and we fume and rage. I learned about this theory almost three years ago and think about it all the time. Reminds me to appreciate and notice the many little things in my day that do go right.